Hey guys, I'm Richard Older. Is it possible to get 200 horsepower from a small block Chevy cam swap? And Richard, they're like, there ain't no way you can get 200 horsepower from a cam. No, no, you actually really can. It's possible to get 200 horsepower from a cam swap. Man, that sounds like just a bunch of internet BS. That sounds like clickbait. No, no, it's really possible. If you start off with a small camshaft, and you better just stop right there. There is no way. I've been working on small block Chevys for coming up on 100 years. There's no way it's possible to get that kind of power. Man, this is just a bunch of B. No, no, it's really possible. I also know that it's very possible. Not only is it possible, but I know one thing. You're also going to watch the video, aren't you? Yeah, I probably will. If the question is, can you really make 200 horsepower from a cam swap on your supercharged small block Chevy? The answer is yes. And it's really not surprising. All you have to do is start with a really, really mild stock camshaft and put a really good camshaft in it under boost. And you'll make that kind of power because as you, we saw in the 175 horsepower cam swap video on the LS, it's possible to make lots of power by comparing a really powerful combination and putting a really, really tiny camshaft in it. And that's kind of what we did here. But I'm going to show you what happened first we built a 383 small block chevy so there's a stroker version it was a 4030 bore and it had a 375 stroke which is common uh, for the 383 small block chevys we had all forged internals in it and quite honestly we didn't really need that but that's the way that we put this particular 383 together it had for it had a forged crank it had forged rods and forged pistons, and the pistons had valve reliefs to allow us to run a pretty healthy camshaft. And speaking of camshafts, the camshaft that we compared was a hydraulic roller camshaft. In this case, it was a Comp XR294R, and that camshaft offered a 540-562 lift split, a 242-248 degree duration split, and 110 degree lobe separation. But we actually stepped things up even further by adding, uh, replacing the 1.5 rocker ratio that's normally associated with, with a small block Chevy. We put 1.6 stainless steel comp roller rockers in it, which upped the lift to 576 and an even 600 or 599.5. So we stepped the lift up even more using more rocker ratio. So obviously to get this 383 to work well and to make power, it had enough displacement, it had compression because we were using a flat top piston, but it also needed good cylinder heads. We installed a set of Airflow Research CNC ported 195 heads, they had valve spring or a valve spring package that would allow us to run this 600 lift camshaft, run both the combination of RPM that we had intended for this combination, and then obviously also boost. We topped this thing off with an Edelbrock Performer RPM intake manifold, an air gap intake manifold, and then when we put the Vortec on, we would enclose the uh, Speed Demon 750 Speed Demon carburetor or Mighty Demon carburetor. We would enclose that inside the Vortec enclosure and run it under boost but when we ran it naturally aspirated obviously it wasn't enclosed in the vortex supercharger enclosure so what we did was start off by running this thing naturally naturally aspirated we had an mst distributor we had inch and three quarter long tube dyno headers they look like kind of zooey we call them sprint car headers and run in this manner this combination was about 10 and a half to one run in this manner in naturally aspirated trim, this combination proves 538 horsepower out at 6,300 RPM and 506 foot-pounds of torque. So it was a good combination, made good power, good healthy 383. We had cylinder head and camshaft. We really had everything that we needed in it. But now let's find out what happened when we added boost and when we did our cam test. Now that we've taken a look at what happened when we ran our built 383 naturally aspirated, we produced 538 horsepower and 506 foot-pounds of torque. So good torque, probably owing to the choice of running a dual plane intake manifold. But we installed a Vortec S-Trim supercharger. You can see it's mounted to the cylinder head. And we have the discharge blowing through a carburetor enclosure, which allows us to use a more conventional style, non-blow-through style carburetor. So it worked out very well. We were running a 750 Mighty Demon carburetor in this case, and all we did was enclose it in the carburetor enclosure. We did have to do more jetting with the blow-through application, so we had to adjust jetting 
to get the airfield that we wanted for us. We were looking for 11 and a half up to 11, eight or so in the, in the safe air fuel range. We did run this thing non intercooled. You can see there's no intercooler on this combination. We were just blowing through the carburetor, which does provide its own intercooler because the blow through carburetor will definitely lower the charge temperature. So that worked out. We also hedged our bet by putting hundred octane fuel in this so that we could put enough timing in it to actually make not only boost, but make some power. And speaking of time, Timing. We dropped the timing on our naturally aspirated combination, which wanted to run best at 35 to 36 degrees of total timing. Dropped that down to 29 to 30 degrees under boost, and all of this worked out very well. So we ran our naturally aspirated combination, made 538 horsepower and 506 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we added boost from the Vortec S-Trim supercharger. The power output jumped all the way up to 761 horsepower. Peak torque was 668 foot-pounds. And out here at the power peak, where we were making 761 horsepower, we saw a peak boost of 7.3 pounds. So 7.3 pounds is not very much. Uh, on a blow-through application, that's certainly safe. And you could easily do this on pump gas. As I said, we had zero bets with 100 octane. We had about 29 or 30 degrees of timing. Uh, the boost curve started out at 2.3 pounds down here at 3,000 RPM and rose to a peak of 7.3 pounds in typical centrifugal supercharger fashion. You almost always have a rising curve like this. So the, the boost will go up with RPM and the power will go up with RPM. In fact, if you wanted to go even more RPM and more power with this pulley combination, what I would suggest is possibly using a single plane intake manifold and there's enough camshaft and cylinder head flow on this thing and there's enough supercharger, you could continue to run this thing out to say 65 or 6600 RPM, where the single plane would be working well, the blower would be working well. As you go up in engine speed, you go up in boost, so you would be going up in power. If you want you know, to charge on the big end, that would be the combination. But speaking of making more power, here's what, what happened when we added a more boost. So we, what we did was replace the six and a half inch crank pulley with a seven inch crank pulley, retaining the 2.95 blower pulley. And we pushed power up over 800 horsepower to 811 horsepower. But we started to run in to a situation where the carburetor now, the, the blow through, the non blow through carburetor was not cooperating. We were struggling with getting the jetting and stuff, right? So it, it wasn't ideal, but we were able to fairly easily push this thing over 800 horsepower with our S trim. And that brought peak boost up to 9.8 PSI and over 800 horsepower on three, three supercharged deal worked out pretty well. Now let's check out and see what happened when we did our cam swap. So I can show you the 200 horsepower cam swap. Now we demonstrated both the naturally aspirated power and what happened when we ran under boost. We can get to our cam swap because this actually came as an afterthought while we were doing this. Uh, when we had put this thing together, we had run our magic camshaft, the Extreme Energy 294 hydraulic roller camshaft. But I thought, you know what? How much power would this thing make with a like a stock cam in it? So this is our power curve with the Extreme Energy 294 camshaft. The pretty good size. It's pretty healthy hydraulic roller cam where it made 761 and 668 foot pounds. But here's what happened when we put in basically a stock hydraulic flat tappet camshaft. And this is a, this camshaft was bought as a replacement stock cam from anything in the late seventies to the mid eighties would have been in a truck or a van. It had like 185 or 190 degrees of duration at 50. It was really small and like mid 400 lift. It was basically just a stock camshaft. This is what you would find if you go to the wrecking yard and you <laughs> pick up a, any kind of like truck motor, truck 350. This is what you would have in it more, more than likely if it's a flat tappet camshaft. So this was our stock camshaft and it made with the same pulley combination and carburetor and all this stuff. All we did was change the camshaft. This thing made, this thing made 541 horsepower and 574 foot pounds of torque. So you can see we're down 540 horsepower to 761. It's actually more than 200. It's actually 220 horsepower from a cam swap. And <laughs> it's not magic. But the interesting thing is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the, um, the, the combination with the big camshaft. Here is our supercharged combination with the stock camshaft. Here, as an interesting comparison, is our naturally aspirated motor with the big camshaft. 
<laughs> and as you can see, our naturally aspirated motor made as much or more horsepower than the supercharged combination did with the wrong camshaft, with the stock camshaft. The one thing that the stock camshaft and the blower did was make a lot more torque than our naturally aspirated combination. But it makes for an interesting comparison that our 383 naturally aspirated with the right kind of camshaft in it made as much peak power as the supercharged combination did with a really mild stock camshaft in it. Although, as I said, it made a lot more torque with the stock camshaft in it once it was under boost but it goes to show you the importance of a camshaft having the right camshaft in it can make a dramatic difference as we saw you can pick up <laughs> as much as 220 horsepower going from a mild stock camshaft to something that actually wants to make power in our case it was the extreme energy 294. let's get to our conclusion Okay guys, what to take away from this video on our 200, now 200 plus horsepower camshaft swap on the small block Chevy. Is it all just flim flam? Is it all just clickbait? No, it's not. It's actually not magic. It's just science. If we start off with a camshaft that's way down here that's stock and very, very mild, and we go to a camshaft that's way up here that's to the high side of a performance camshaft, and this part is very important, we also on that cam swap have a combination that has everything else that it needs. Like when we test LS motors on this small block Chevy, we had everything. We had displacement, we had compression, we had head flow with our airflow research heads. We had a good intake manifold in the form of our RPM air gap. We had enough carburation. We had everything that we needed. So in our case, what we did was subtract one thing that it needed to make that power and that was cam timing. So when we go from a very mild camshaft to a healthy, aggressive camshaft, we're gonna pick up big power, and when we do it under boost, we're gonna pick up even more power. I'm Richard Holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and yes, you can make more than 200 horsepower from a cam swap.